Today we're going to focus on GCSE English language AO5 and AO6 and those assessment objectives are to look at transactional writing so let's get really good at writing non-fiction for the exam. As a starter activity get a pen and paper. Do you know or do you need to remind yourself of what DeForest stands for and what the terms PAF stand for? And then I want you to think, discuss, what could we do to have an impact in our opening? So three things we're doing. Do we know what DeForest stands for? Write them down if you do. Do you know what PAF stands for? And then think and discuss, what could we do to have a really good impact in our opening. So um, we're going to pause the video and take some time to do that recall. Okay, I'm going to go through the answers. So PAF stands for Purpose, Audience and Format. And it's a way of reminding yourself that in every writing question, you'll be given the purpose, so the kind of reason you're writing, the audience you're writing to or for, and the sort of format it is. So all of this can guide you. De Forest stands for direct address, alliteration, anecdote, fact opinion, rhetorical question, repetition, emotive language, statistics and the triple rule of three. And how can we do a really engaging opening? Well, try and engage readers from the start. So a captivating, an emotive anecdote. So that's like a real life story, but it could be something in an exam that you make up um, to really engage the emotions and interest of the reader. For example, if it was an article or a speech, thought provoking questions, surprising statistics. The opening remember sets the tone for the entire piece that you're writing. So the learning intentions of this lesson are for you to be able to identify the key words in a question for writing, identify planning methods you might use, identify your own opinions on the topic that you're given to write about, and to produce some content that speaks to your audience. So that's kind of our intention for today's lesson. So firstly, before you even begin, you really have to look at the question. So the first thing to do, if we're looking, for example, at the Edexcel um, 2.0 paper, questions seven and eight are two different questions. So you need to really look at the question um, and think about the question and the content before you choose. Don't choose a speech over an article if the content, the topic that you're writing about is less familiar. Don't go for the easiest format. Go for the content that you have the most to write about. So what triggers you to really come up with some opinions? So we read the questions and we need to consider what is the purpose I'm being asked to write for and who is my audience? Let's have another moment to just kind of pause the video and think about this question. We can discuss this or we can make notes. How might each purpose or audience change your style, tone and content? So if you're given an audience, for example, of youth, how would that be different to families? If you were asked to write to a member of parliament, how would that be different to writing for a community newspaper? So we're just going to pause and make some notes and have a think about this. OK, let's try this um, practically then. Car park fees. The council are planning to charge car park fees for local parks and shops. What might be the views of these people? What might the views of young people be? What might be the views of families and businesses? So think about how they might be affected by this and who would be most affected and would they welcome it or would they not welcome it? How would they feel? And if you had to write on this topic um, to these different people, what might you, how might you change your style and tone? So again, it's just a, a moment to think, to discuss, to pause, and, uh, and then we're going to move on. But just really thinking about how each of these people might view this topic differently. Okay. We're also going to notice that question seven gives the opening for you to continue. So on question seven, you'll always get an opening paragraph, which does help you to set the style and tone. Question eight is different because it gives you bullet points 
And every time it gives you a bullet point, that is content that you really must include in your answer. So it's giving you things that you really must consider. It's a really good idea to kind of have a think about planning your writing. So again, now I want you to pause and have a think. What are the quickest planning methods we can use in order to plan a piece of writing in a very short space of time, like two minutes? So what methods might you use and um, how can you make it effective and quick? So for example, not writing in really long sentences, it should be keywords. So just pause and again, have a think, what are the best ways of planning a piece of writing? Okay, now we're going to explore some sample questions. So each time I want you thinking about the key audience and purpose in the question. So can you identify the words that give you the audience and purpose? And obviously then there's also the key content. What is it you're actually forming an opinion on? So I'd like you to do that. We're going to pause and see if you can do a three minute writing plan. So underline the keywords and then can you do a three to five minute maximum writing plan using keywords only just to sort of plan out what you might write about. So this is the question. Researchers say that over testing of students in schools is increasing stress and anxiety. The methods of educational assessment and testing should be rethought. Write a blog entry for a student union blog to explain your views on the topic. It's been started for you. The number of tests and mini tests I've taken since the start of the year can't be counted on two hands. It's dizzying. You might think, well, that's life for a student, but should it be? So we're going to pause and see if you can come up with a plan so who's the audience, what's the purpose, and what, what could you write in a plan for this topic? Okay, so we're going to go through. Um, the format was a blog. The purpose was for you to explain your views on that particular topic. So you needed to really explain your views. And the audience were students. So how would that change your style and tone? Now let's do that again, because the more you practice, the easier it gets. So there's going to be three more coming up. I want you to each time pause the video and do the same thing. Can you underline the, or write down and make notes on the key audience and purpose? And then can you challenge yourself to do a three to five minute writing plan? Here we are again. Pause the video. And here's the next one. So again, pause the video, do the same. Okay, I wonder how that was. Let's have another look at another one. You can pause the video, do the same. Okay, you've had a really good feel now for how this works. I'd like you to go back through the video and choose one of these topics to have a go at. So choose either question seven or eight. Remember to write with a suitable audience and purpose in mind that they've given you. Use rhetorical devices that fit the purpose and audience, but most importantly, explore your opinions in the content. Write in paragraphs, develop your ideas in detail, create a clear beginning, middle and end, and vary your sentence structures and styles. And don't forget to use a variety of punctuation. You can always find time to go back and add and change punctuation at the end if you need to, but ideally try and bear that in mind as you go. But content is the most important thing. So it's over to you to do this, and then we're going to move on to a self assessment. So for your self assessment, we're going to pause now and I want you to ask yourself Did I manage to write with the audience and purpose in mind? Use suitable rhetorical devices. Go back through your writing and check and where you've used it, does it fit? Does it make sense? Does it work? Does it suit the audience? Explore your opinions in the content. Did you write in paragraphs? Now that's really important. Remember my video on tip top paragraphing methods. Did you write in clear paragraphs that flowed in a logical order? Did you develop, ask yourself, did I develop my ideas in detail? Have you created a clear beginning, middle and end? And apologies, beginning should have two ends. 
middle and end and can you did you vary your sentence structures and styles and use various punctuation marks remember it's always a journey and a process so the more you do this the easier and faster it, it gets really really well done keep going great stuff well done